In this video, we will be looking at exponential graphs. So exponential graphs, similar to the cubic graphs and the reciprocal graphs that I made in the previous two videos. You don't need to know much about these, more so just recognizing them and potentially being able to draw them. So all of these graphs I have here, so here is the first one, all I have done to draw them is through substitution. So those two-way tables where you've got the x and the y coordinates, you sub in the values into the equation and it gives you the y coordinate. That's exactly what I did here. So the most famous type of exponential graph is this one here called y equals e to the x. Now e is a constant just like pi, it's a rational, never ending, called Euler's constant and it is around the value of 2.71828. Like I said, it goes on and on. However, this is the graph of e to the x. Exponential graphs share the same property that no matter what the number is, they will always have a y-intercept of 1. That is because anything to the power of 0 makes 1. Now another property, notice here, e to the x, the e, whenever x is 1, our answer is just going to be e. So here I've marked on where x is 1, y is around that 2.7 value that e is. Now let's have a look at another number and see how they vary. So we have y equals 2x, which is slightly less than e. And you can see the red line here. It's a lot more gradual in the way that it steepens compared to when it's 4. It starts a bit shallower and then shoots straight up. And that's because if you think about it, you take any number, if you square it, then you cube it, and then you do it to the power of 4, the numbers get bigger very very quickly so the bigger number you start with the steeper that is going to get and again you notice that both of them have that intercept at one and also when x is one on the red graph y equals two likewise y equals four on the other one and finally when it's negative values similar to the things i described in my function transformations video the graph is just flipped in the y-axis, so you can see it's just in the reverse way this time. So nothing too hard to comprehend there. Overall, that is a summary. Like I said, in terms of drawing them, I think the most effective way is just to use substitution, sub in the x-values into these equations, and they will give you the corresponding y-coordinates and you plot them like that. Now, it's quite rare that you'll end up having to plot these, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. So I hope that helped. Thank you very much for watching.